All right, I know this is going to be review because I know you learned it in pre calc, but I know for some of you the recall is not right there in that frontal lobe. So here we go. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting, you know, the trig functions are all periodic functions, so um, they actually don't have inverses, um, but we kind of fudge things and, and um, restrict the domain in order to consider the trig functions um, as having an inverse. So, for example, let's look at y equals sine x. And the graph of y equals sine x, as you know, looks like We'll go from negative pi to pi. So this is pi. This is negative pi. All right. And so what happens in order to consider looking at the inverse sine function, we need to restrict the domain. And we're going to restrict the, the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And that's here, negative pi over 2, and pi over 2. So when I restrict the domain and only look at and it is inclusive, including negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, then what happens is the range is still from negative 1 to 1. But we're only looking at this much of the function from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So what does that look like when I graph the inverse? Well, let's kind of look at some ordered pairs and, and then we can graph this. So if I look at some ordered pairs for y equals sine x from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Let's look at x and y. And when I look at negative pi over 2, the sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. When I look at, and I'll just use the, the ones that are the unique ones, or the special ones, um, sine of 0 is 0, and then the sine of pi over 2 is equal to positive 1. So, knowing what I know about inverses, what do we do when we look at the inverses? We look at switching the x with the y and solving for y. And so, it's kind of a little different in trig land where, you know, it, it looks like x equals sine of y, but we really write it this way, y equals, and we, we're seeing arc sine instead of, and it's either or, so you may still see both notations. Okay, so it's either arc sine, and that's what you're going to see for the most part in this book, but you may see inverse sign written that way. So let's swap out the x's and the y's and look at x and y for the inverse. Well, I know that I can swap out negative 1, negative pi over 2, 0, 0 is the same, and 1, pi over 2. So what does that look like? So let's look at the graph. So my range is now my domain, which is negative 1 to 1. My range is what was the domain. So let's go negative 1, and this is going to be, we'll call that pi here, and negative pi down here. So negative 1, negative pi over 2, 
we'll call that here, 0, 0, and 1 pi over 2. So the curve looks something like this. Okay, so now you have to think about the domain and the range in terms of the inverse functions. And each of them are a little different. So let's, let's um, take a minute to, I'm going to do another video, but I want you to look at page 372 in your book and look at the graphs of all of the inverse trig functions and the domains. And I want you to write these down because you're going to need to refer to the domain and range when you're actually finding inverse trig functions and evaluating inverse trig functions. So take a minute, page 372, and look at all of those graphs and write down the domain and range. And I'm going to come back with another video that um, deals with examples evaluating inverse trig functions and probably solving some equations and doing some right triangle stuff. So take care of that and then watch the next video.